here on the edge of a grove of wattle trees and wanted to, to demonstrate and, and show people what um, actually happens with these wattles. There are a lot of people viewing these clips from North America or from Europe who are surprised by us taking out trees when the, the common wisdom is to actually increase uh, forestation. But one needs to understand that in the KZN Midlands here we are in a grassland biome and planting up forests here would be akin to putting forests into the steppes of Mongolia. I'm sure you can understand that would be an inappropriate solution. But quite apart from that, the trees that we're removing are not indigenous. They're alien, they're invasive, they spread considerably. Unfortunately, they're these uh, Acacia mernsia, the wattles from, uh, from Australia. And these trees create some interesting problems. The first thing is that they have an allelopathic effect. Now, I'm no scientist, but I've uh, been taught to understand that it's, it's an effect whereby other species don't grow underneath the trees. And so if you look at the ground around me, which is just under the trees, you can see how bare it is. And that's because of the allelopathic effect and no other species grow here. So you get this monoculture. And quite aside from that, the leaf matter falls from the trees. And it does that right through the year because it's an evergreen, so it's, it's always dropping leaves. Um, and that leaf matter, it so happens, is very rich in tannins. Wattles are grown for their tannins, but apparently the uh, fallen leaf matter is even more concentrated than the balance of the tree. And that leaf matter falls to the ground, forming a mat of material that's very hydrophobic. Now, if it was a drier time of year, I'd be able to show you this material in my hands. It has just rained, so it's perhaps not the best time. But uh, the material is, there's a great deal of it. Um, and it, it's very hydrophobic normally. And what happens is that when it rains heavily, as it does here in South Africa, the, um, the water pools on top of it for a while, and then it starts to run. And as it runs, because there's no other vegetation, it washes away the topsoil. And we're in a copse of trees now where I've often stopped the vehicle and shown this, uh, this effect to people because it's a brilliant demonstration site. So let's have a look. I'm going to walk into the grove and show you some footage and close-ups of the ground where I'll demonstrate the problem to you. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a walk up here. Here's a pristine grassland, uh, really in good nick. Uh, with a good mix of species covering the hillsides and that's our normal uh, grassland territory that one would expect to see in these upland river catchments and then across here where you've got the grove of trees you can immediately see the bare ground and I'm sure you can appreciate the erosion risks of that and if you look at this ground you can see how the water has pooled to a, to a resistance point and then broken through and started to run down the slope like this and we're at the top of the copse of trees so these examples are in miniature here but I'm going to walk through the grove and show you what happens when that flow of water begins to accumulate already here's a log lying against the slope and you can see the difference in level from below the log to above the log where the loose topsoil has, has been held back by the log. There's a lesson in that. When we fell these, we try and put them along the contour to hold back uh, the soil while the regrowth starts to come along. But let's go down into this grove of trees, very dark in here. And can you see how barren it is? Um, every little stick like this one laying along the contour contributes to stopping the wash. But the problem of the trees overhead remains. Cattle often shelter in here from storms, so some of the farmers do see value in these cops of trees, but the species is not ideal. In front of us here is some bare clay with the topsoil largely washed away, and here is the root down which it is washed. So I'm walking down the slope, following the passage of the water towards the other end of the cops of trees. And as you get here, you can see more and more obvious a gully as it flows down the hill, washing away a mixture of detritus and topsoil until you have more and more of this bare clay. And the best evidence of this is when you get to the bottom of the copse of trees, 
which we're about to do now, across this little track. And here, you can see how much soil has washed up against the fence for a start, where that line of green vegetation is, there's a step. And then below the fence, a quagmire of, of loose topsoil, and what you can't see here, but I've walked into that pasture many times, a very healthy green pasture because of a couple of feet of topsoil that over the years has washed to the bottom end of this copse into the field below. So that's the problem with our wattle. 